It all depends upon what's important to you, what you're emphasizing, what your concerns are to determine which projection you would pick. I'm going to introduce a projection that was invented by a fellow by the name of Gerhardus Kramer. He's known in the trade as Mercator. This is a redrawing of his original map from 1569. It's a very interesting projection because one of the things that it does is it makes a statement on the face of the map. And on the face of the map, it says, this is a new and enlarged description of the Earth with corrections for use in navigation. He was very specific about the purposes for which that map would be used. Now, if Mercator were alive today, and he went down to the local map store, and he saw that someone had taken his projection, as Rand McDally did, and publish a full-size modern map of the world, he would say, oi vey, what is this? What are you doing? Dumpkoffs. <laughs> he was German. Actually, he was Flemish. This would make no sense to him because he never intended this to be used as a world map. It is in very common use as a world map, and we're very, this is a very familiar image to us, but it is an illogical use of that map projection. It was intended to be used as a way to create regional sea charts. The purpose of it was so you could go from one point to another point in the ocean, draw a straight line between those points, follow that straight line as a line of constant compass bearing, and you'd end up where you wanted to go. But it, it, was, it would completely confound Mercator to have his map projection in common usage as a world image. Well, another image that was developed in 1974 by historian Arno Peters is this Peters map. This was, of course, a map that was developed with one specific purpose in mind, which was to create a map that was fair to all people. Peters was doing a history of the world, and he was concerned that the Mercator projection didn't allow him to portray the world civilizations over the last 5,000 years because it emphasized the European-centered or northern hemisphere-centered civilizations. The Mercator projection compresses the region around the tropics. Most Mercator maps today crop the bottom of the map, removing Antarctica, resulting in the northern half of the Earth taking up two-thirds of the map area. The south then becomes diminished in size and importance when compared to the north. And so Peters set out to create a map that showed the countries in true size and true proportion. And this is his map. It's kind of funny because you've got severe elongation between 45 degrees north and 45 degrees south, and you've got severe compression between 45 degrees north and the North Pole, and between 45 degrees south and the South Pole. So every map to show something true also has to lie. Every map that wants to show something accurately has got to sacrifice another area because in order to portray this round circle, let's say we were to take an X-Acto knife and cut this all up and try to lay it down on the floor, just the same problem as the orange or the clementine, is that it becomes impossible to do that unless we're sacrificing something. If you want to show lines of constant compass bearing, like on a Mercator, you can't have sizes. If you want to show sizes, you lose shape. If you want to have it be distance accurate, which will be another map that we'll see next, then you're going to lose both size and shape.